I bought a bunch of cheap plastic nesting bowls to use as molds for the concrete. I started by cutting the rim off of one bowl so that it would fit inside of another bowl with a gap. Cutting the bowl in this way left a cutout, so I dammed this up with some duct tape and hot glue. I covered this gap in the outer bowl in the same way. I cut some small pieces of plywood the same width as the space between the bowls and use these to attach the two halves together. The top two tiers needed holes in their bottom, so I measured and cut dowels to cast in these holes. The dowels were a little rough, so I covered them in Vaseline to make removing them from the concrete easier and then hot glued them into the molds. I decided to use the inner mold of the second tier as the outer mold of the third tier, but this really ended up complicating the project, as you'll see in a little bit. I used Quickcrete 5000 as the concrete in this project. I tried to add as little water as possible so as to maximize strength, but still enough so that I could get the concrete into all the little nooks and crannies of the mold. A 2x4 worked really well to vibrate everything into place. I used my jigsaw without a blade to vibrate out as much of the air as possible. I cast the second and third tiers in much the same way as the first, except it was a little easier because I could overflow the concrete from the outer tier into the inner tier. Eventually I got a pretty good system down, using a scrap piece of wood like a spatula to scoop the concrete into the molds. After casting, I covered the molds with plastic wrap to allow them to moist cure for 48 hours. Two days later, the concrete was strong enough to stand on its own. I took off the spacer blocks and started peeling away the plastic bowls from the finished concrete. Pliers and vice grips proved really handy in taking everything apart. Removing this little inner mold was easy enough, but separating the two nested tiers was a bit of a challenge. These plastic nesting bowls are a bit rigid, so I had to cut a slit to peel them away from the outside of the tiers. I'm really happy with this nice smooth surface that the bowls created in the concrete. Even with a coat of Vaseline, the dowels still had to be drilled out. Ultimately, the only way I was able to separate these two tiers was by hammering with a screwdriver at an angle. This caused a bit of chipping, but nowhere that would be noticeable in the finished fountain. Now unconfined on one side, that last plastic bowl peeled away from the concrete pretty easily. To elevate the tiers of the fountain and hide the pump, I basically cast an upside down bowl with channels for water to flow in. To elevate the last tier, I cast a dome without a cavity in the middle. While I had the wet concrete out, I patched a rust spot in the top tier left by one of the plywood spacers. To seal the base of the fountain, I first removed as much of the dust as I could from its inside. I used Thompson's water seal to seal the inside of the fountain base.
I used a little adjustable aquarium pump to run the fountain. The tubing I bought was a little loose in the pump outlet, so I fixed it in place with hot glue. The pump is hidden in the middle of the fountain base by the spacer with channels. To keep water from entering this hole, I filled it up with hot glue and then sealed it with plumber's putty. Using a lot of putty had the added benefit of holding the next tier in place and sealing the hole in its bottom. I just filled up the rest of the hole with hot glue. I wanted to elevate the fountain a bit higher, so I cut a hole in the bottom of a clay pot and used that as the top tier. I made sure to really fix the flexible tube into place here so that it wouldn't move around while discharging water. I started filling the fountain from the top so that the pump wouldn't be trying to pump air. Once I could see water in the fountain base, I filled it up the rest of the way. Now, time to test. As I added water, it was clear that the pump discharge was just too high, even at its lowest setting. To fix this, I tried just trimming the outlet tube a bit shorter. The fountain took a little while to come to equilibrium, but eventually the discharge rate was perfect. More like a babbling brook than a water park attraction. I'm really happy with how this turned out, and it's great to have in my workspace under my loft bed.